everyone, I'm Harley. I'm the education coordinator at Petaluma Bounty. Welcome to our farm. Um, I hope you find some great bugs. I hope you're staying safe at home and finding some cool stuff to do at home. take my mask off since I'm in, have lots of space around me. Um, I'm here at the Petaluma Bounty Farm and this is a field of crops that are growing out and I'm going to talk a little bit about where to look for insects. So one place where you might see them is when there's flowers. You can see them flying by, flowers maybe sitting and waiting. Flowers have a lot of pollen and nectar that are good sources of food for a lot of different types of bugs. Let's look over here. So as I'm looking at this plant, you can look at the flowers to see if anyone's coming by. You can also look at where the leaves and the stem meet. See if anyone is hiding in there. Um, on the, also, insects can be stepping on the underside of the leaves. There. Another place is where the um, at the ground at the base of the plant. Ready? Yep. Okay. So I'm uh, just looking around, seeing what I can find, and I notice that on this rock we have. Uh oh. All of these, these are ladybug pupa. So these are the ladybug larvae that crawl around and eat insects. And just like butterflies go into a cocoon to become an adult, ladybugs go through the same process. And so here they are settling on the rock and growing into more of a hardened shell. And then inside of that, they will wait and develop and come out as an adult ladybug. But this is what they look like when they're pupating. When I found the ladybugs, it made me curious that there must be some aphids nearby because that is the ladybug's favorite food. I was looking on this grown out broccoli plant and the stem is just covered with them. You look, you see all those little lumps, all those gray lumps. Each one of those is an aphid. And aphids are a type of insect that are considered a pest on plants because they have, their mouth is like a little straw and they pierce into the stem of the plant and they drink the plant's juice. And uh, if they keep growing and growing, they can cover the plant and make the plant not grow as well. But a little bit of aphids is okay. Like if there's um, balance between predator and prey, if you have ladybugs in your garden, that will help keep the population of aphids in check. Another place to look for insects and other creepy crawlies is underneath rocks. So if you carefully lift up rocks and peer at what's underneath. Oh, look, there's an earwig. And this is also, this must be Ladybug Central because I see so many. There's a ladybug larva, there's a pupa. There's one that's looking a bit more developed. Oh, I see ants and a spider and a beetle. On this one little rock, there's so many nooks and crannies that it provides a lot of little hiding spots and habitats for a lot of different insects. So maybe when you're looking for rocks, look for ones that have different types of textures because that could provide a lot of little different places you might find things. These are some of the optional tools that you can use on your insect safari. If you have a net, that can help with the uh, looking for insects or you can just bring a plain container or jar and that will help if you capture an insect to observe it before letting it go again. So 
I'm seeing that there's a lot of bees that are foraging on these flowers right here. So I'm going to see if I can maybe sweep one up in my net. So if you get one in your net, I think I'm going to use a smaller jar. What I like to do is put the jar there and then use the lid to close it and then keep the net tight so it can't get out. Then put the lid on. So. I got a bumblebee. Do you see how they have baskets on their legs that they collect the pollen with? Bumblebees and honeybees have these um, brushes full of hair on the side of their legs and that's what they pack pollen in when they collect it, when they go from flower to flower. It has a yellow face and um, I know it's a bumblebee because it has a yellow stripe on its abdomen. I'm going to let it go. So if you have a net, I want to give you some tips on how to use it. You don't want to necessarily go straight down and hit the plants. What you want to do is sweep it over and then tilt it closed. So if you're trying to catch something, you sweep it and then tilt closed. You can also brush it against the grass and see what, you might not see an insect that you're aiming for, but there might be ones that you don't see that you happen to pick up. So I'm going to try that. Well, I got some flowers. <laughs> I got this little um, plant bug and a, a little, oh, this little beetle, it's called a weevil, has a tiny little snout. Looks almost like an elephant snout. It's moving very fast. Maybe I'll try to take a picture of it. So Harley told me that there's a lot of cucumber beetles were a big pest at this farm. This is a cucumber beetle. It's green with black spots. And those outer wit those outer things are actually wings that are covering. So what they like to do is climb up to the top of a stem and then take off. See? It's climbing, climbing. It's a cucumber beetle. One flew away. Are you going to fly? I guess he likes it there. All right, now we're at the orchard. And I'm going to look at the base of this plant. I got a dragonfly. This never happens, they're really fast. It was resting on the thing and my container was big enough that I could get him without hurting him. Look at those beautiful wings. It's a blue darner. He's got blue. Oh, I should I, I wanna let you, I think he's warming up. He's gonna fly away. Before I got distracted by the dragonfly, I was going to look more for the things that might be creeping um, in between the leaves and underneath the leaves. So let's see what we can find in here. Ooh. I'm looking 
looking at the base of the plant, some of the leaves are starting to get broken down. I'm starting to really, yeah, messy down here. Oh. That a slug? Maybe it's poop. I can't. <laughs> I gotta wash my hands after this. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of decomposers in here. When after you know after leaves are done growing, they need bugs to help decompose them and turn them back into soil. So that's kind of what's happening underneath here. That's what happens in a compost pile, too. Okay, so this is called um, this. It looks like a spit, right? It looks like a spit wad. It's like this foamy thing that's on the leaf that's made by what's called a spittle bug. So spittle bugs secrete mucus and water and they, they create sort of a bubble foam house that they can live in and it protects them. So inside there, there's a little larva. Let's see if I can find him. Peekaboo. So that little green guy, that's the spittle bug. So here at the Petaluma Bounty Farm, they have something that's called a hedgerow. Here you can see are the row crops. So they have they plant the food plants in in rows that they can you know harvest and, and rotate depending on what they want to grow. And then over here on the border of the field, they have all these bushes that are uh, perennials that are na uh, made of native plants. And these are made to create habitat for insects and birds and other animals that will help with pest control. So there will be different wasps and beetles and birds that will like to use the hedgerow and fly over and help out with the crops, either pollinating or eating aphids or eating worms, um, helping and benefiting the crop. So this is one great strategy for natural pest control is having a hedgerow. Here I am watching a rosemary bush which is full of flowers right now and it's very attractive to different bees and I know bees can maybe be a little bit scary because some of them could sting you but I'm standing very still and I'm watching them and they are very focused on their food. They are very focused on going to the flower so as I'm standing here still they're not coming after me at all. They're just watching and I see a honeybee and I saw some carpenter bees buzzing around too. 